warm welcome to Anuradha Week Astrology. Today, we are going to talk about the trine of Jupiter in predicting timing of events through transits. But before that, a big thanks to all of you for liking, sharing and subscribing to our YouTube and Spotify channel and writing in your comments and suggestions there. If you haven't liked or shared or subscribed to our videos, please do. And do remember to press the bell icon so that you can get the updates as soon as possible. We know transits are important and we know that in transit, Jupiter's transit is always given a lot of importance because it brings in good news. So whenever we are trying to time an event, we need to first consider the dasha and then we go into what Manteshwar Maharaj has said in Faldipuka in the 16th chapter. He states very clearly in the 16th chapter, shloka number 32, that we need to observe in which sign or the Navamsha, the lord of the house, which is to be considered, is placed. So, if you are going to talk about childbirth, we are going to take the fifth lord and see the signs that it is placed in, in the D1 and the D9. When we are going to talk about marriage, we are going to take the seventh lord, See the signs where they are placed in the D1 and the D9. Similarly, for a job, we are going to take the 10th Lord. See where they are placed in the D1 and the D9. If you're talking about a birth of a sibling, from your chart also, it could be made out. Your parents just needed to consider the third Lord into consideration and see where it was placed in the D1 and the D9. Having said this, what is the second part of it? The second part of it states that now, when Jupiter is in trine with this particular lord under consideration in the D1 or the D9, then the good effects of that house takes place or is realized. Let us see it through a couple of examples. First example that I take is of a childbirth. Now, the natal chart is of Gemini Lagna and the fifth lord, that is the first child that we are seeing, is placed in the sign of uh, Leo, that is in the third house. But it's placed in the Leo sign in the D1. And if we are to consider the D9, then it is placed in the sign of uh, Cancer. Now, the child to this person was born in 2000. 2000, if you go back around May, June 2000, Jupiter was transiting the sign of Aries. Aries and uh, Leo are in trine to each other. So, Jupiter would be in trine to Venus, the fifth lord, in the D1, not in the D9. But it is said, either we consider D1 or D9. Another chart that we take is for marriage. So, in this chart, the, uh, the Lagna here is Sagittarius. And the seventh house lord, therefore, becomes Mercury. Mercury in the D1 is placed in the sign of uh, Scorpio, that is the 12th house, and in the Navamsh, it is placed in the sign of Capricorn. Now you can see that uh, when the person got married or engaged, rather, because in those times when people got engaged, it was deemed to be a half a marriage done in 1997. Jupiter was transiting the sign of Capricorn, which is exactly where the seventh lord is placed in the D9. So we see that D1 or D9 placement of the lord of the house under consideration, when in trine with Jupiter, which is in transit, is a good time for us to time our events because that is the time when a person is likely to have the good event relating to that house law. So do try and apply it in your charts and see how it works for you and do write in your comments and your suggestions in the box. Let us know about which other transit you want to know and we will definitely make a video on that. Till we meet with you again, stay safe. Please Thank hit you. the bell icon for fresh updates. Don't forget to like, share and comment on the videos and Please subscribe to our channel.